Stunned silence gripped the Galactic Council Chamber as irrefutable evidence of humanity's deception played across the view screens. Fornax, the Soleil diplomat, stood triumphant before the assembled alien delegates. The holographic recording of human warships with impossibly advanced weaponry looping behind him. This cannot stand, the Arcturian ambassador shouted, slamming a tentacle on his console. The humans have betrayed our trust and threatened the peace. Similar outraged denunciations erupted from the Keith Ka, Zin Ott, and a dozen other council races. Calls for an overwhelming military response to neutralize the human threat grew to a fevered pitch. George Ross, the lone human in the council chamber, clenched his jaw as hostile glares bored into him from every direction. The secret fleet project had blindsided him as much as the aliens. Pushing down his own sense of betrayal, Ross stepped forward, hands raised in a placating gesture. I propose an emergency diplomatic mission to Earth, he said, fighting to keep his voice steady. Let us demand answers from my government directly before this council rushes into a war that could engulf the galaxy. In the hidden shipyard orbiting Mercury, Dr. Elena Nevsky stood before a viewport, heart pounding as she gazed at humanity's last desperate gamble. The EFS Prometheus, first of the new stealth battleship class, floated in the void like a half-glimpsed shark. She had poured her soul into the design of its revolutionary armor, engines, and weapons, sacrificing everything to give her species a fighting chance. But had it been enough? Proximity alarms suddenly wailed throughout the station, and Nevsky whirled to the sensor console. Her blood ran cold. Incoming alien ships, a whole battle group's worth, had just appeared at the edge of the solar system. They were coming in fast, weapons charged and sensors probing. She jabbed the shipyard defense force alert and sprinted for the gantry way to her ship. The Prometheus would face her trial by fire far sooner than anyone had ever planned. Dr. Elena Nevsky's fingers flew across the control panel, her heart racing as proximity alarms blared throughout the hidden shipyard. The alien battle group had appeared at the solar system's edge, sensors probing and weapons charged. She initiated the station's defenses and opened a channel to the Prometheus. Captain Petrov, prepare for immediate launch. We have hostile contacts inbound. Understood, Doctor. We're ready. Petrov's voice crackled with tension and determination. Nevsky turned as another alert flashed on her screen, an incoming transmission from Earth. Admiral Marcus Thorne's grizzled face appeared, his teeth gritted in a grim line. Doctor, the Council's ships aren't responding to Hales and they're in a combat posture. I need the Prometheus operational now. We have to assume the worst. Nevsky nodded, her mouth dry. We're launching, Admiral. The Prometheus will be there. She terminated the link and sprinted for the gantryway, her boots pounding on the metal deck. In the shipyard's cavernous main bay, the Prometheus loomed like a crouching predator, her hull gleaming with the dull sheen of advanced stealth composites. Nevsky boarded and sealed the airlock, her heart hammering against her ribs. On the warship's bridge, Captain Petrov watched the tactical display with laser focus as the Prometheus shed its moorings and slipped out of the shipyard. The alien vessels were closing fast, their formations screaming hostile intent. Weapons, stand by point defense grid and prepare to arm the primaries, Petrov ordered, his voice steady. Helm, lay in an intercept course. Prepare for emergency maneuvers. The Prometheus surged forward her revolutionary engines propelling her towards the incoming threat at breakneck speed. Petrov studied the lead alien ship, noting the bulbous, organic curves of Soleil design. His tactical instincts screamed danger, even before the first salvo of molten plasma lanced out from the warship's gun ports. Hard to port, Petrov shouted. Return fire, full defensive spread. The Prometheus heeled into a stomach-churning evasive pattern, the inertial compensators straining as the human ship jinked and wove. Searing lines of directed energy stabbed out from her flank batteries, scything across the Sele vessel's shields in blinding flares of released energy. The alien ship reeled, trailing atmosphere from ruptured compartments. On the Council diplomatic ship, Ambassador Ross clutched the armrests of his acceleration couch, his fingers tightening as he watched the explosive space battle unfolding before them. Fornax paced the deck, 
his scales rippling with impossibly strong rage. Order your ship to destroy that human abomination, the Soleil hissed, jabbing a clawed finger at the Prometheus. Ross shook his head, his teeth gritted. We came here to talk, not start a war. I won't let you provoke a conflict that could engulf the galaxy. Fornax's eyes narrowed to venomous slits. Then you are a fool and a traitor to the Council. When this is over, you will answer for your cowardice. Ross met the Soleil's glare unflinchingly, a cold lump of dread settling in his gut. Fornax and his hardline faction seemed hell-bent on forcing a confrontation. Diplomacy be damned. As the Council ship pressed on towards Earth, he could only pray that cooler heads would prevail before the unthinkable happened. On the Prometheus's bridge, Petrov watched with grim satisfaction as the Sele warship drifted out of formation, engines flickering and weapons falling silent under the ruthless precision of the human ship's counterattack. The rest of the alien battle group had slowed, maintaining a tense distance. Sele vessel disabled, Captain, the weapons officer reported, his voice tight with adrenaline and relief. The other ships are holding position. Petrov nodded, his eyes still locked on the tactical display. The Prometheus had proven herself, but he knew this was only the opening salvo in what could soon become an all-out interstellar war. He glanced over at Dr. Nevsky, noting the mixture of exhilaration and anxious calculation on her face. It seems your miracle ship works as advertised, Doctor, he said quietly. Nevsky met his gaze, her expression grim. Let's just hope it's enough. Something tells me we're going to need a whole fleet of them before this is over. As the Prometheus and the Council ship converged on Earth's orbit, a shockwave of revelations and recriminations was already racing across the planet's surface. In government chambers and corporate boardrooms, the seeds of fear, ambition, and desperate gambles were beginning to sprout. The fate of humanity, and perhaps the galaxy itself, hung by a fraying thread as history's currents surged towards the brink. The Prometheus glided into Earth's orbit, her hull still warm from the recent firefight. On the bridge, Captain Petrov watched the approaching Council diplomatic ship with wary eyes. Maintain defensive posture, he ordered, but power down weapons. Let's not provoke them further. As both vessels docked at the orbital station, a flurry of activity erupted. Dr. Elena Nevsky and Ambassador George Ross were quickly ushered into a waiting shuttle, descending through the atmosphere in tense silence. The craft touched down on a nondescript landing pad, where armored vehicles whisked them away to a sprawling underground complex. Deep beneath the Earth's surface, they were led into a stark conference room. Prime Minister Mikhail Voronov stood at the head of a long table, his face a mask of hardly restrained fury. Ambassador Ross, he said, his voice cold. Perhaps you'd care to explain why alien warships just fired on one of our vessels in our own solar system. Ross swallowed hard, his mind still reeling from Fernax's betrayal. Prime Minister, I assure you, I had no knowledge of the Sele's intentions. Their actions have shocked and dismayed me as much as anyone. Voronov's eyes narrowed, and yet it was your counsel that sent them here. With all due respect, Ross countered, fighting to keep his tone even. The Council agreed to send a diplomatic mission. What happened in orbit was a clear violation of that mandate. As the debate raged on, Dr. Nevsky felt a tap on her shoulder. She turned to see Dr. Sanjay Patel, his face ashen. Doctor, we need to talk, he whispered urgently, in private. They slipped out of the conference room and into an empty corridor. Patel's hands shook as he pulled up a holographic display. I've discovered a massive security breach in the Fleet Project's database, he said. Someone's been extracting classified data on the Prometheus for months. Nevsky's blood ran cold. How much did they get? Too much, Patel replied grimly. Schematics, research data, weapon specs, it's all compromised. Nevsky's mind raced. Initiate a full lockdown, she ordered and start tracing the source. We need to know who's behind this. Back in the conference room, the atmosphere had shifted. Voronov was presenting Ross with a series of intercepted transmissions and financial records. We've been monitoring council communications, the prime minister explained, and what we found is deeply troubling. Ross leaned in, his eyes widening as he scanned the data. 
coded messages between Seelay hardliners and weapon smugglers, transfer logs linking council funds to covert operations on Earth. His stomach churned as the full scope of the deception became clear. This, this can't be, Ross muttered, but the evidence was irrefutable. Voronov's expression softened slightly. It seems you've been deceived as much as we have, Ambassador. The question now is, what are we going to do about it? Ross straightened, a newfound drive hardening his features. We expose them, he said firmly. All of them. I'll return to the Council and present this evidence myself. Voronov nodded. And as a gesture of goodwill, we're prepared to share some of our advancements with the Council. Perhaps together, we can forge a true path to peace. As the meeting concluded, Nevsky and Petrov prepared to board the Prometheus for their journey to the Galactic Council headquarters. Just as they reached the airlock, Nevsky's communicator chirped. It was Patel. Doctor, we've traced the data breach, he said, his voice tight with urgency. It's coming from a facility at the edge of the solar system, unmarked, off the grid. Nevsky exchanged a look with Petrov. Change of plans, Captain, she said. We need to make a detour. The Prometheus's engines flared to life, propelling the ship towards the outer reaches of the solar system. As Earth receded behind them, Nevsky stared out at the star-flecked void, her mind racing. Who had stolen her work, and why? The answers lay ahead in the cold darkness of space. The Prometheus cut silently through the void, its stealth systems rendering it nearly invisible against the star-speckled backdrop. On the bridge, Captain Petrov studied the tactical display, his eyes narrowing as a faint energy signature appeared at the edge of their sensors. There, he said, pointing to a barely discernible blip. That must be our target. Dr. Nevsky leaned in, her brow furrowing. It's putting out less power than a civilian shuttle. Are we sure this is the right location? Petrov nodded grimly. It fits the profile. Minimal emissions, no transponder signal. They're trying to stay off the grid. As they drew closer, the station came into view, a cobbled-together assemblage of habitation modules and repurposed cargo containers. Its exterior was pockmarked with micrometeorite impacts, giving it the appearance of long abandonment. Life signs? Petrov asked his sensor officer. Faint but present, sir. I'm reading at least a dozen biosignatures. Petrov turned to Nevsky. Doctor. I want you to stay here. My team will investigate. Elena shook her head firmly. Not a chance, Captain. That's my work they've stolen. I'm coming with you. Minutes later, Petrov led a six-person security team through the station's airlock, Elena close behind. The interior was dimly lit, with exposed wiring and makeshift repairs visible everywhere they looked. As they moved deeper into the facility, the sound of hurried footsteps echoed from an adjoining corridor. Petrov raised a fist, halting the team. He gestured silently, and two of his people took up positions on either side of the intersection. A figure in a lab coat burst around the corner, nearly colliding with the security team. The man's eyes went wide with panic, and he turned to flee. Stop! Petrov barked, but the scientist was already sprinting away. The security team gave chase, their boots clanging on the metal deck plates. They rounded another corner and found themselves face to face with a squad of armed mercenaries. Contact! Petrov shouted as plasma bolts sizzled past his head. The corridor erupted in chaos as both sides opened fire. Elena ducked behind a bulkhead, her heart pounding. She peeked around the corner, catching glimpses of Prometheus crew members exchanging fire with the black clad mercenaries. In the midst of the firefight, Elena spotted an open doorway. She waited for a lull in the shooting then sprinted across the corridor and through the entrance. Inside, she found herself in a laboratory filled with familiar-looking equipment. Holographic displays flickered with schematics she recognized all too well. Cross-sections of the Prometheus hull, diagrams of its revolutionary propulsion system. Admiring our handiwork, Elena? She whirled to face the source of the voice. A tall, silver-haired man emerged from the shadows, a sardonic smile playing across his lips. Elena's breath caught in her throat. Roland? Roland Vance, her former mentor and ex-lover, spread his arms wide. In the flesh. I must say, I'm impressed you tracked us down so quickly. Elena's shock gave way to anger. You stole my work, Roland. Why? 
Vance's smile turned cruel. You chose the military over me, remember? Over us. I simply decided to liberate your brilliance from their short-sighted control. He gestured to the lab around them. Archon Industries will revolutionize galactic technology, and we'll make a fortune doing it. Elena's eyes narrowed. You're selling weapons to the highest bidder. Do you have any idea what you've done? Vance shrugged. Started a war, most likely. But think of the profits. With a snarl of rage, Elena lunged at him. They grappled fiercely, crashing into workstations and sending equipment clattering to the floor. Despite Vance's greater size, Elena's fury gave her strength. She slammed him against a console, pinning him there. It's over, Roland, she panted. Vance's eyes darted to a flashing red button on the console. Not quite, he spat, slamming his palm down on it. Alarms began to blare throughout the station. A computerized voice announced, Self-destruct sequence initiated. All personnel evacuate immediately. Elena's grip loosened in shock, and Vance took advantage. He shoved her away and bolted for the door. Before she could give chase, Petrov appeared, his uniform singed from the firefight. Doctor, we need to go now. Elena hesitated, her eyes falling on a nearby data terminal. Wait, she shouted, rushing to the console. Her fingers flew across the interface, initiating a data transfer to her personal device. What are you doing? Petrov demanded. Saving what I can, Elena replied through gritted teeth. We can't let all of this be lost. The station shuddered ominously around them as Elena's device downloaded gigabytes of stolen research. Just as the transfer completed, a secondary explosion rocked the lab. Time's up! Petrov grabbed Elena's arm, all but dragging her from the room. They sprinted through smoke-filled corridors, dodging falling debris. The Prometheus security team had already retreated to the airlock, providing covering fire as Elena and Petrov made their final dash to safety. Moments after the airlock cycled shut, the station began to break apart. The Prometheus engines flared to life, propelling them away from the expanding fireball. On the bridge, Elena slumped into a chair, her legs shaky with adrenaline. She pulled up the data she'd managed to salvage, her eyes widening as she scanned its contents. Captain, she said, her voice hoarse, you need to see this. Petrov leaned in, studying the display. His face hardened as he absorbed the implications of what they'd uncovered. Get me Ambassador Ross, he ordered. We need to change course. The real fight is just beginning. Beginning. The Prometheus surged through space, its course altered to intercept the Council delegation. In the ship's briefing room, Elena Nevsky's fingers flew across a holographic display, bringing up file after damning file. This goes deeper than we imagined, she said, her voice tight. Archon wasn't just reverse engineering our tech. They were actively collaborating with Salay radicals. Ambassador Ross leaned in, his face ashen as he absorbed the implications. Dear God, he muttered. If the Council gets wind of this... Which is precisely why we need to act fast, Captain Petrov interjected. He pulled up a tactical overlay, highlighting a distant sector of space. Our intel suggests a clandestine meeting is set to take place here. Sealay officials, arms dealers, the works. Ross nodded grimly. The emergency security summit is our cover. While the council bickers, we strike. As the Prometheus neared the rendezvous point, tension coiled through the ship like a live wire. In engineering, Nevsky ran final diagnostics on their stealth systems. On the bridge, Petrov briefed his hand-picked strike team. Remember, he said, his voice low and intense, we're outnumbered and outgunned. Speed and surprise are our only advantages. The ship dropped out of FTL, materializing inside the secret outpost sensor grid. For a heartbeat, all was silent. Then chaos erupted. The Prometheus's weapons lashed out, Precise and devastating, defense turrets exploded in showers of sparks and twisted metal. Caught off guard, the outpost inhabitants scrambled for battle stations. Petrov's team deployed, their boots clanging on the outpost deck plates. Plasma fire sizzled through the air as they engaged the Sele commandos. Through the melee, Petrov caught glimpses of crates bearing human military insignias. Stolen tech, primed for distribution. Nevsky! He barked into his comm. They've already started production. 
We need to... His words were cut off as a nearby bulkhead exploded. Shrapnel peppered his armor, and he felt a sharp pain in his side. Gritting his teeth, he returned fire, downing two Soleil soldiers in quick succession. On the Prometheus, alarms blared. Nevsky's eyes widened as she registered multiple incoming signatures. Captain, we've got company. Soleil reinforcements, closing fast. Petrov swore under his breath. Initiate emergency extraction. We've got what we came for. As the strike team fought their way back to the extraction point, the Prometheus shuddered. Nevsky's hands flew across her console, her face paling. No, no, no! The ship lurched, nearly knocking her off her feet. The reactor core was destabilizing, its containment field fluctuating wildly. She knew in that moment they'd been betrayed. Someone had sabotaged them from within. Petrov's voice crackled over the comm. Doctor, what's our status? Nevsky's mind raced, calculating variables, running scenarios. There was only one option, and it made her blood run cold. Captain, she said, her voice steady despite the fear gripping her heart. I'm initiating an emergency separation. The engineering section... Absolutely not, Petrov cut her off. We're not leaving you behind. There's no choice, Nevsky insisted. If that core breaches, we lose everything. The evidence, the crew, everything. A beat of silence, heavy with unspoken words. Then, do it. Nevsky's fingers danced across the controls, overriding safety protocols. She felt the vibrations as explosive bolts fired, severing the engineering section from the rest of the ship. It's done, she said softly. Get our people to safety, Nikolai. Make this count. As the Prometheus pulled away, Nevsky turned her attention to the failing reactor. She had precious little time to prevent a catastrophic breach, and even less time to make peace with her fate. In the distance, the Council's summit continued, blissfully unaware of the sacrifices being made to preserve their fragile peace. As Petrov and his battered crew raced to deliver their vital intelligence, the future of humanity hung in the balance forever altered by the choices made in these crucial moments. The Prometheus limped into Earth orbit, its hull scarred and systems failing. As the surviving crew disembarked, Captain Nikolai Petrov's face was etched with grief and willpower. He clutched a data drive containing the fruits of their mission and the last work of Dr. Elena Nevsky. Within hours, news of the attack and Nevsky's sacrifice spread across Earth's colonies. Crowds gathered in city squares, demanding justice. In New Beijing, protesters hurled rocks at the Galactic Council Embassy. On Luna, dock workers refused to service alien vessels. Ambassador Ross stood before the Emergency Council Summit, his usual diplomatic demeanor replaced by cold fury. He activated a holographic display, filling the chamber with damning evidence. Honorable representatives, he began, his voice steady despite his anger. What you see before you is irrefutable proof of Soleil involvement in the attack on the Prometheus. Murmurs of shock rippled through the alien delegates. The Soleil ambassador, Thrax, leapt to his feet. This is outrageous. We categorically deny... Spare us your lies, Ross cut him off. We have recorded transmissions, financial records, even DNA evidence linking Soleil radicals to the assassination attempt. As the evidence mounted... The Council's unity fractured. Within days, the Soleil delegation was expelled, their worlds placed under strict quarantine. But the damage was done. Trust between species had been shattered. In a secure bunker beneath Geneva, Earth's military and civilian leaders gathered. General Zhang paced the room, her cybernetic eye glowing an angry red. We should strike now, she insisted, while they're in disarray. And risk all-out war? countered Prime Minister Okafor. We're not ready for that. A priority communication interrupted their debate. On the main screen appeared an alien face, Zarak, Supreme Counselor of the Galactic Alliance. Esteemed leaders of Earth, the alien's translator conveyed, we find ourselves at a crossroads. The actions of the Sele extremists threaten us all. We propose a joint military operation. Silence fell over the room. It was Ambassador Ross who finally spoke. What exactly are you suggesting, Counselor? A temporary alliance. Your best soldiers, 
our most skilled operatives, working together to eliminate this threat before it consumes us all. The human leaders exchanged wary glances. It was a bold move, in a potential trap, but the alternative was unthinkable. We'll consider it, Prime Minister Okafor said carefully, on one condition. The command ship for this operation will be of Earth design and manufacture. Zarek's expression was unreadable. Agreed. Months passed in a flurry of activity. On a secret facility on Mars, engineer Sanjay Patel oversaw the construction of humanity's most advanced warship. The EFS Hyperion took shape, a sleek predator built for speed and stealth. Captain Petrov stood on the bridge of his new command, marveling at the seamless integration of human and alien technology. Beside him, First Officer Alara studied tactical readouts with inhuman focus. Her four eyes blinked in rapid succession as she processed the data. Captain, she said, her translator conveying a mix of excitement and apprehension. We've located the Salé stronghold. Petrov nodded grimly. Prepare the strike team. It's time to end this. Deep in the ship's hold, human commandos and alien special forces ran through final equipment checks. Despite months of joint training, tension crackled between the species. The Hyperion's engines flared to life, catapulting the ship across light years in the blink of an eye. They emerged in a maelstrom of weapons fire. Evasive maneuvers, Petrov barked as the ship shuddered under the assault of Sele planetary defenses. Alara's hands danced across her console, coordinating the Hyperion's return fire with preternatural precision. The ship dove and weaved, its advanced shields absorbing punishing blows. In the launch bay, the strike team boarded their dropships. Lieutenant Sarah Chen, leader of the human contingent, shared a nod with her alien counterpart. Together, they would penetrate the Sealay bunker and destroy their illicit weapons cache. The bay doors opened, revealing the scarred surface of the Sealay world below. Chen took a deep breath, tightening her grip on her pulse rifle. For Earth, she whispered, for all of us. The dropships plunged into the firestorm, racing towards their objective as the battle raged above. The dropships touched down amid a hail of plasma fire, their hulls glowing red-hot from atmospheric entry. Lieutenant Chen hit the ground running, her pulse rifle at the ready. Around her, human and alien commandos fanned out, taking cover behind twisted wreckage. Forward, Chen shouted, gesturing towards the looming Sele bunker. Zeta team, suppressing fire. A barrage of energy bolts lanced out, pinning down the Sele defenders. Chen's team advanced in practiced formation, alien and human moving as one. They had trained for months for this moment, and it showed. Inside the Hyperion's bridge, Captain Petrov gripped the arms of his command chair as the ship shuddered under another salvo from the planetary defense grid. First Officer Alara's hands danced across her console, her four eyes darting between readouts. Shields at 62%, she reported, her translator conveying calm precision, redirecting power from non-essential systems. Petrov nodded grimly. Status on the ground team? They've breached the outer perimeter, Alara replied, encountering heavy resistance. On the planet's surface, Chen's team fought their way deeper into the Salé stronghold. The air was thick with acrid smoke and the smell of ozone. Chen ducked as a plasma bolt sizzled past her head, leaving a scorch mark on the wall behind her. Chen to Hyperion, she called into her comm. We've located the weapons cache, requesting orbital strike on my mark. Negative, Petrov's voice crackled back. Too much risk of friendly fire. You'll have to destroy it manually. Chen swore under her breath, then turned to her alien counterpart. Looks like we're doing this the hard way, Kathax. The towering insectoid clicked its mandibles in what Chen had come to recognize as grim amusement. As you humans say, Lieutenant, when is it ever easy? They pressed forward, fighting room by room through the labyrinthine complex. Chen lost track of time, her world narrowing to the next target, the next threat. Her armor was scorched and dented, her muscles screaming with fatigue. Finally, they reached the central chamber. Banks of alien computers hummed ominously, surrounded by crates bearing human military insignias. Chen's heart sank as she realized the scale of the operation. Plant the charges, she ordered, 
We've got five minutes to clear the blast radius. As her team worked, an alarm blared through the complex. Chen's calm crackled to life. Lieutenant Petrov's voice was urgent. We've detected a massive energy spike. They're powering up some kind of superweapon. You need to abort now. Chen looked at the crates of stolen tech, then at her team. She made her decision in a heartbeat. Negative, Captain. We finished the mission. The next few minutes were a blur of gunfire and explosions. Chen's team fought their way back to the extraction point, the complex collapsing around them. They emerged into blinding daylight just as the charges detonated. A massive fireball erupted behind them, vaporizing the Soleil stronghold and its illicit cargo. Chen allowed herself a moment of grim satisfaction before the realization hit her. They were still deep in enemy territory with no clear extraction route. Hyperion, this is Chen, she called. Mission accomplished, but we're cut off. Request immediate evac. The response came not in words, but in a devastating barrage of energy weapons. The Hyperion descended through the clouds like an avenging angel, its advanced ordnance turning pursuing Sile forces to ash. As Chen's battered team boarded the rescue shuttles, she caught sight of the destruction they'd wrought. The Sile world burned, and with it she knew any chance of an easy peace. Aboard the Hyperion, Petrov received the casualty reports with a heavy heart. So many lost, human, and alien alike. And for what? A symbolic victory that might push both sides closer to all-out war. He turned to congratulate Alara on her brilliant tactical maneuvers, only to find her slumped over her console, purple blood seeping from a wound in her side. The ship's doctor rushed to her aid, but Petrov could see in his eyes that it was already too late. As the Hyperion limped away from the battle, its halls filled with the wounded and the grieving, Petrov stared out at the stars. They had won the day, but at what cost? And what fresh hells awaited them in the fragile peace to come? The Hyperion's bridge hummed with tension as Captain Nikolai Petrov stared at the incoming transmission. General Marcus Keller's holographic image flickered to life, his face a mask of terrifying fury. Captain, this is your final warning. Terminate the Sile leadership now, while we have the advantage. Petrov's eyebrows furrowed. With respect, sir, that would be an act of war. We're already at war, Petrov, Keller snarled. Either you pull the trigger, or I'll find someone who will. The transmission cut off abruptly. Petrov exhaled slowly, his mind racing. He turned to his communications officer. Get me Ambassador Ross, now. As the crew scrambled to establish the secure link, alarms blared throughout the ship. First Officer Chen's voice crackled over the intercom. Captain, we have a situation in the negotiation chamber. Delegate Voshka has revealed himself as the leader of a terrorist cell. They're threatening to detonate a biogenic weapon. Petrov cursed under his breath. Lock down all sections. I want security teams. He was cut off by another alarm. This time, it was Sanjay Patel's voice that filled the bridge. Captain, we've detected an unknown device in the ship's ventilation system. It's giving off energy signatures consistent with a viral payload. The pieces fell into place with sickening clarity. Petrov's voice was calm despite the storm raging in his mind. Patel, assemble your best team. Find that device and neutralize it. Chen, contain the terrorists. But do not, I repeat, do not give them any reason to trigger that weapon. As his crew sprang into action, Petrov's eyes fell on Ambassador Galina, the moderate Sele faction leader. She met his gaze, her alien features unreadable. It seems, Captain, she said softly, that we find ourselves with a common enemy. Petrov nodded grimly. Indeed we do, Ambassador. I hope you're ready for some unorthodox diplomacy. Together, they formulated a plan. While Patel's team raced through the Hyperion's corridors, Searching for the hidden bioweapon, Petrov and Galina orchestrated a delicate dance of negotiation and intimidation in the chamber. Voshka, the revealed terrorist leader, sneered at their efforts. You cannot stop what is coming, human. Your species will be purged from the stars. Petrov leaned in close, his voice a low growl. You're right about one thing, Voshka. Something is coming. But it's not what you think. With a nod to Chen, Petrov activated the Hyperion's advanced teleportation system. 
In a flash of light, an elite strike team materialized in the chamber, weapons trained on the extremists. Chaos erupted. Shots were fired. Bodies hit the floor. Through it all, Petrov kept his focus on Voshka, knowing that as long as the terrorist leader lived, the threat of the bioweapon remained. As the firefight raged around them, Ambassador Ross's face appeared on a nearby screen. Captain, I've reviewed your request. You have emergency authority. Whatever you're planning, do it fast. Petrov didn't hesitate. Helm, set course for the Sele system. Maximum speed. The Hyperion lurched into motion, its powerful engines propelling it across light years in moments. They emerged in orbit around a massive gas giant, its swirling storms concealing the extremists' hidden base. All hands, prepare for atmospheric insertion, Petrov commanded. We're going in. The ship plunged into the gas giant's turbulent atmosphere. Alarms blared as the hull strained against the immense pressures. On the bridge, Petrov gripped his chair, his fingers tightening. Status on the bioweapon, he barked. Patel's voice came back, tight with tension. We've located it, sir. Working on disarming now, but it's complex. We need more time. Time was the one thing they didn't have. As the Hyperion descended deeper into the gas giant's roiling depths, Petrov knew he faced an impossible choice. The extremist base lay before them, ripe for destruction. But aboard his own ship, a deadly viral payload ticked down to activation. His finger hovered over the command to fire, even as Patel's team raced against time. In that moment, the weight of two civilizations pressed down on Nikolai Petrov's shoulders. Whatever he chose, the consequences would reshape the galaxy forever. Petrov's finger hovered over the firing control for a fraction of a second before he pulled it back. Belay that order, he said, his voice cutting through the tension on the bridge. We're not going to be the ones who start this war. He turned to his communications officer. Get me a secure line to Ambassador Ross, now. As the crew scrambled to establish the connection, Petrov's mind raced. He knew he was defying direct orders from General Keller, but the stakes were too high for blind obedience. Ambassador Ross's face appeared on the screen, her expression grave. Captain, I hope you have a plan. I do, Ambassador. It's risky, but it might be our only chance to salvage this situation. Petrov outlined his strategy rapidly, watching as understanding dawned on Ross's face. She nodded, her eyes gleaming with approval. Do it, Captain. You have my full support. With the Ambassador's backing secured, Petrov sprang into action. Activate the emergency transporter protocols, he ordered. We're evacuating the moderate Sele delegates. The ship's advanced transporter technology hummed to life, locking onto the biosignatures of Ambassador Galena and her faction. In a shimmer of light, they materialized in a secure hold, separated from Voshka's extremists. Chen, Petrov barked into his comm, contain the terrorists, but do not engage unless absolutely necessary. We need to buy time. As Chen's team worked to isolate the extremists, Petrov turned his attention to the hidden bioweapon. Patel, status report. Sanjay's voice crackled over the comm, strained but determined. We've located the device, Captain. It's, it's unlike anything I've seen before. We're working on disarming it now. Petrov's teeth clenched. Work faster, Patel. We're running out of time. With the immediate threats aboard the Hyperion contained, if not neutralized, Petrov made his boldest move yet. Helm, set course for the gas giant. We're taking the fight to them. The Hyperion plunged into the roiling atmosphere of the massive planet, its hull creaking under the immense pressure. Petrov led a hand-picked strike team to the shuttle bay, his mind focused on the task ahead. As they approached the hidden asteroid base, Petrov's voice rang out over the team's comms. Remember, our primary objective is to cut off their escape routes and prevent them from regrouping. We go in fast and hit them hard. The shuttle bay doors opened, revealing a swirling maelstrom of gases and electromagnetic disturbances. Petrov's strike team launched into the chaos, their specialized craft darting between swirling storm fronts. Inside the asteroid base, alarms blared as the defenders realized they were under attack. Petrov's team fought their way through narrow corridors, 
the air thick with plasma fire and the acrid smell of burning metal. Just as they neared the heart of the facility, Voshka's voice echoed through the base's communication system. You're too late, humans. Witness the power of our conviction. A massive tremor shook the asteroid, and Petrov's tactical display lit up with warnings. Sir, his second-in-command shouted, they've initiated some kind of plasma detonation. It's aimed directly at the Hyperion. Petrov's mind raced, calculating trajectories and possibilities in an instant. There was only one option, insane as it was. All teams, fall back to the shuttles immediately, he ordered. Hyperion, prepare for emergency maneuver Petrov Alpha. As his team scrambled back to their craft, Petrov opened a channel to the ship. Bridge, initiate a harmonic link between our Alcubierre drives and the enemy vessels. We're going to create a subspace rift. Protests immediately flooded the comm channels, but Petrov cut them off. There's no time to argue. It's this or we lose everything. Execute now. The Hyperion's massive engines roared to life, their energy output amplified and distorted by the captured Soleil ships. Space itself seemed to buckle and warp around them as the untested maneuver took effect. A blinding flash of light engulfed everything, and for a moment Petrov thought he'd made a terrible mistake. Then as quickly as it began, the maelstrom subsided. The Hyperion drifted in a sea of debris, its hull scorched and battered but intact. Of the Sele base and Voshka's forces, there was no sign. As damage reports flooded in and the crew worked to stabilize the ship's systems, Petrov allowed himself a moment of grim satisfaction. They had survived in a seemingly impossible way, but he knew the real battle was just beginning. With Earth in sight, Petrov steeled himself for the political firestorm that awaited. He had disobeyed orders, risked everything on an unproven gambit, and fundamentally altered the balance of power between humanity and the Sele. As the Hyperion limped towards home, Petrov couldn't help but wonder, had he just saved two civilizations or merely postponed the inevitable conflict? Only time would tell. The Hyperion's battered hull gleamed in Earth's orbit, a testament to the crucible it had endured. Captain Petrov stood at attention before the United Earth Council, his face a mask of stoic dedication as accusations and accolades flew like crossfire. Captain Petrov's actions averted an interstellar war, Ambassador Ross argued, her voice carrying across the chamber. He should be commended, not vilified. General Keller's eyes narrowed. He disobeyed direct orders and squandered a tactical advantage. That's treason, plain and simple. As the debate raged, Petrov's comm unit buzzed. It was Patel, his voice urgent. Captain, you need to see this. The data from our last jump. It's unprecedented. Petrov's eyes widened as he studied the holographic display. The subspace rift they'd triggered had formed a temporary wormhole, bridging vast distances to the heart of Galactic Council space. It was an opportunity and a threat beyond imagining. Before Petrov could process the implications, alarms blared throughout the chamber. Security feeds showed Keller's loyalists storming the Hyperion, weapons drawn. It's a coup, Ross breathed, her face pale. Petrov's mind raced. We need to get to the ship. Now. They fought their way through chaos-filled corridors, phaser fire scorching the walls around them. By the time they reached the Hyperion's bridge, Keller's forces had already taken control. The general's face filled the main view screen, triumph glinting in his eyes. Stand down, Petrov. This is bigger than you or me. We have a chance to show the galaxy humanity's true power. Petrov watched in horror as Keller initiated the wormhole protocols. The Hyperion's reactor strained, channeling impossible energies. Space itself tore open before them, a swirling vortex of cosmic forces. Keller's armada surged forward, plunging into the rift. On the other side, the skies above the Galactic Council's worlds erupted in fire and light. Earth ships emerged like vengeful gods, their weapons already blazing. Aboard the Hyperion, Petrov, Ross, and Patel huddled in a maintenance shaft, their options dwindling by the second. We can't let this happen, Ross said, her voice barely above a whisper. Petrov nodded grimly. There's only one way to stop them now. 
We have to destroy the Hyperion. Patel's fingers flew over his data pad, initializing the overload sequence. I've evacuated all non-essential personnel, but someone needs to stay behind to ensure the detonation. Their eyes met, a lifetime of unspoken words passing between them. As the last escape pod jettisoned, Petrov stood on the bridge of his dying ship. Through the viewscreen, he watched Keller's armada wreak havoc on the unprepared council worlds. I'm sorry, he whispered to no one in particular. His hand hovered over the final command, the weight of two galaxies pressing down upon him. With a deep breath, he pressed the button. The Hyperion's reactor went critical, unleashing a wave of destructive energy that consumed everything in its path. The wormhole collapsed, severing Keller's link to Earth and stranding his forces in uncharted space. As the cosmic fire engulfed him, Petrov's last thoughts were of the uncertain future he had wrought. Humanity had changed the galaxy forever, for better or for worse, and now they would have to live with the consequences. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.